there are few things more annoying than having your mountain bike ride ruined because of a simple mechanical that would have been easily fixable if only you'd had the right tools. That's why it pays to be prepared, whether you're going for a quick rip from home, a longer day ride or somewhere a little bit more remote. In this video I'm going to run through the sort of kit that I think you should put in your pack or on your bike for each of those eventualities, making sure that whatever the trail throws at you, you'll be able to get back safe. In this small pack is what I would consider the absolute bare minimum. It's what I take on every ride, regardless of whether it's just a short jaunt from the house or a little bit further afield. Obviously I've got some water, but in order to help me fix my bike, if anything comes loose, you really need a, min a little mini tool like this. This one is not huge, it's not heavy, but it does have all the bits I need to be able to tighten up anything that's loose or make any adjustments I need. The next, well, what do you do if the air's escaped from your tires? Well, you need to fix it. So if you've got inner tubes, puncture repair kit with patches and make sure your glue is fresh because this stuff does go off and there's nothing worse than finding out all your glue has already dried up when you really need it. If you're running tubeless, then you'll want something like this cunning little fella. This has a bradawl on one end, one end so you can slightly widen out the hole and roughen it in preparation for placing a little tubeless repair bung in there. This has some in here and just thread one of those things onto this, push it in and it should stop the puncture in conjunction with the sealant in your tyre. To get the air back into your tyre, I would say it's worth taking a carbon dioxide counter, ideally a high volume one, so like a 16 gram or 20 gram item like this, because any smaller and you're unlikely to get enough air in your tire, especially if you're running high volume tires or you're running a 29er. Um, also you'll need the little tubeless inflated bit and whatever you do, don't just lob this in the bushes once you're done with it, take it home. That is about it. Um, I was throwing some tyre levers too, just because they weigh basically nothing. And if you do need to wrestle a tube off, you got that. But that is what I take as a minimum. The other thing I'd always say that I take on every ride is my telephone. That's because if I do get into bigger trouble, I can ring someone. If I have an accident, I can do that. And of course, if I need to pose for any selfies or get KOMs on Strava, I can all do it via this. But what if you want to take the essentials but ride completely unencumbered by a pack? Well, don't worry, we've got you covered there. First up, you could use this small saddle pack. It contains all the things you'd need to take, but it wraps up neatly and then fits under the saddle using a dial to retain it. On some selected Merida bikes, there is also a special little pocket on the saddle here that slides a mini tool inside it, meaning you'll never be without it. Furthermore, there are these rather cool things that fit in the end of your handlebar. In this side, we've got a tubeless repair punch and also a little multi-tool. In the other side, there is a quick link plier that also has a magnetic retainer for a spare quick link. So, no matter where you go riding or when you go riding, you know you'll take the basics with you. And of course, for hydration, the good old water bottle cage. Now we move on to the day pack. This is what I take for a full day's riding, somewhere not too remote, but first up, I would take all the things we previously took, so multi-tool tire levers, tubes to repair kit, patch kit. I'd also add in a proper inner tube, just in case, a shock pump, just in case you need to pump up the shocks on your bike, a proper little mini pump, not just relying on carbon dioxide. I was personally like taking a tire pressure gauge, but that's because I'm funny about getting my tire pressures just so. Next, I usually take a little Ziploc bag to keep these things waterproof. In here, I have, I'll go the other way, a bit of loo roll, really useful for cleaning your glasses, mopping up stuff, and also for being loo roll. I also have, a bit of duct tape, this is wrapped around a pencil, but you know, duct tape is super useful for fixing things. Following on from that, zip ties, also super useful for getting you out of trouble. Uh, you can also release a quick link with one of these, uh, if you know how, so that's quite a useful thing. Following on from that, actual quick links. So 
Here I've got both Shimano and SRAM because I have both Shimano and SRAM drivetrain bikes. So they're different quick links. So take ones that suit your bike in the correct speed. And I also take spare brake pads because in the past I've been caught out without any, well, the brake pads have died halfway around a ride. And there's not much you can do because you can either destroy your brakes or stop riding. So no fun. And also, I usually take a spare derailleur hanger just in case mine gets bent. I can replace it and certainly bottom it'll get me home on all my gears, or if not that, then most of my gears. Uh, on top of that, I would probably add in a few more snacks. In this, I've got a proper proper water bladder, so a fair bit more water. That can be in addition to your water bottles. But that is what I generally take for my day's riding. So if you're stepping up from just a gentle day ride, you're gonna go somewhere a bit more remote, or it's just a very, very long ride, maybe with poor weather conditions, then taking a big pack is a good idea. What should you put in it? Well, I'd say all the things that we've previously spoken about. If you're going somewhere particularly rocky, maybe consider a second inner tube. Right. The first thing that I would say is to supplement your toolkit, possibly with a multi-tool like this. It's got a useful set of pliers, which you can do an awful lot of bodging and fixing with, and knives, files, they can really get you out of trouble good quality set like that. I would also suggest that if you're going for a very long distance that you take a small bottle of extra lube. It'll stop your chain squeaking and your drivetrain will thank you for it. If the night's getting early or you're potentially be out all day and into the evening, then taking a rear light is a really good idea. If you can be seen, you can be safe. And if you're likely to have had any mechanical issues, then you might be riding home in the dark, even if you'd not planned to. It's better to have this charged and in your pack and not need it. Right, the other thing I would say, may seem a bit apocalyptic to some, but is a survival bag. They don't weigh very much, but if you have an accident or one of your friends has an accident, then being able to get them in this and keep them warm and cozy until help arrives can make a really big difference between having hypothermia and being in serious trouble and not. So it weighs barely anything. Just leave it in the bottom of your pack. On a similar line, better to plan for the worst and not have to do it but here is a first aid kit. So this is a fairly good mountain one. It's got everything you need. Of course, everything in this first aid kit is useless unless you have the knowledge how to use it. So I'd suggest going on a first aid court as well. Um, it's also worth just, you know, not everyone in your group has to take one of these, but as long as one person has got it and one person knows how to use it, you'll be fine. Additional things that I like to chuck in here, maybe a woolly hat, keeps you warm on brakes extra set of gloves. If yours are wet and soggy, it can be really miserable. So having some dry gloves to switch into can be a bit of a godsend. And of course, as much food as you think you'll need, plus a little bit more. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and you find it informative and hopefully a little bit educational. If you've got any suggestions for things that you always keep in your pack, then feel free to let us know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like, and for more of this sort of thing, consider subscribing to our channel. Anyway, thanks, goodbye.